Hello there, lovely folks of YouTube. Ren here. I want to talk about this very, very tall friend right behind me. Uh, those of you who don't recognize this plant, which I wouldn't be surprised is a lot of you, uh, this is marshmallow. Uh, this is the Althea officinalis. Uh, it is the plant that was originally used in marshmallow candies. These days, of course, this plant is no longer used in those candies because they have been replicating something that's similar to the original marshmallow candies with gelatin rather than the mucilage in the marshmallow roots. But this is the plant that spawned our marshmallows. So uh, it is a perennial that's native to Europe. As its name implies, it does like wetter ground. It, its native habitat is on the edge of marshes. So, um, I have mine in a spot where the ground is lower and water tends to kind of pool here a little bit when it rains, um, but it does also benefit from a really good moisture retaining mulch as well. So wetter ground because again, marsh mallow. So uh, it does require full sun, about six hours minimum sun. So I do get some shade, obviously, and you can see my plant kind of leans forward to get out of the shade of this red bud, but it does get it six hours of sun, so it's okay in this spot. Um, it would probably do better if it was in a wetter spot with more sun, but it does okay here. So um, as you can see, actually, maybe you can't see. Why don't I uh, give you a little bit of close up so you can uh, get a better look at this plant. Here we go, that's a better look. So this plant is in the Malvaceae family, which is the same family as things like hibiscus and hollyhock. And as you can see, it does have flowers that look just like those other plants in that family. They are much smaller and they're not as showy as those plants, but they are very similar. Uh, they tend to be white um, when they're freshly bloomed. These are not, but when they're freshly bloomed, they will oftentimes have sort of a violet center to them. So they're a fairly attractive plant flower, even if they're a little uh, more on the nondescript side. So after the flowers bloom, which you can see maybe, I don't seem to have any yet, but you can kind of see where it makes these like, well, sort of if it would focus, um, it leaves behind these sort of uh, the seed buds and the seeds actually form in like a perfect circle, a ring around the center which um, causes the seeds to actually like sort of look like a wheel of cheese. Um, and they have sort of that like wedge shape to them, almost like a wedge of cheese. So actually one of the uh, common names of this plant was cheeses or cheese um, because of that distinctive shape of the seed pods that they had. Um, and also those seed pods are edible, particularly when they're green and they haven't fully hardened yet. Um, it was a very common wild snack for a lot of the kids who used to go out into the, into the woods and wilderness back when that was an acceptable thing to let your kids do. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, you can see the leaves here have that very sort of grayish tinge to them. That's because of their extremely fuzzy texture. Like you feel these things, they are so soft, they feel just like velvet. It's actually just kind of delicious to just rub your skin up against them. They feel so nice. This plant does get fairly tall. You can see like this is equal to head height with me and there's the top of the plant. So this one's about six feet tall. Usually between four and six feet is about how tall this plant gets. So this plant is fairly easy to grow. I grew mine from seed. Um, and it's pretty prolific in creating that seed as well. Um, but you can also grow it from root divisions. Now, if you are planning on harvesting the root for making your own confectionaries or medicines, um, which this does make um, a really good uh, cough syrup, the root, you should harvest, wait until the plant is at least two years old to get yourself a good, um, you know, good root. So two years is usually when they harvest it, so it'll be like fall of the second year, which these are actually just about ready to harvest. They're probably a little older. These might be three-year-old plants. Uh, I don't know, time has no meaning to me anymore. But, um, but yes, you wanna give yourself a good rootstock 
to harvest from that also will leave enough behind to regrow the plants again. So that's why you want to wait at least two years before you harvest any roots from these plants. But you can also use the leaves too. The leaves can be used in teas as well. Anyway, let's go and um, I'll sit down again because it's hot and I need to sit down and we'll talk some about the magical properties of this plant. Uh, I am telling y'all, like it's 9 a.m. and I'm already sweating. It's hot. Welcome to Virginia summertime. Yay. Um, anyway, so the name of this plant, uh, Althea, actually comes from the Greek altho, which means to cure. Um, it was very widely used in herbal remedies, um, and particularly the mucilage was used to soothe inflammation. So like I mentioned that it's, you know, could be used as a cough syrup. In fact, I think the original marshmallow candy was a medicinal candy for coughs. Fun fact. But um, the, uh, the leaves can also be used in teas and skincare products to soothe inflammation on the skin. This is a very, 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 very safe plant, okay? Like, there is absolutely nothing dangerous about any part of this plant, which is why I'm sharing this information with you. Um, because obviously if things were dangerous, I don't talk about them because that leaves me open to liability. But, um, so anyway, that soothing property, the fact that it lives in water, the mucilage that it makes, the flowers, all of these point to the fact that this plant is under the dominion of Venus. So, and of course, being a Venus plant, it can also be used in love magic. Uh, in particular, uh, there have been, um, I think it was Paul Bayerl, who actually recommended uh, making an oil infusion with the leaves and then using that as a sexual lubricant. So, um, there's an option for you if that's something you're interested in. It doesn't necessarily have to be with a partner either. Um, now, an interesting thing about this plant um, that, that we see oftentimes in plants that have connection with love magic is they sometimes also have connection with death. There's a very fine line between those two things. They're kind of tied together as two sides of the same coin in a lot of magical practices. Um, that's, and even just in you know, modern colloquialisms too, that's why we see in French, um, you know, their, uh, their, phrase, their terminology for uh, an orgasm is la petite morte, the little death. So um, it's a fun little, fun little thing there. Um, but anyway, this plant was often planted on the graves of the dead. Um, in particular, a lover that had passed, um, and it's possible that it could be sort of soothing and easing their passage to the, um, to the next life. So, um, so that soothing nature could be seen as soothing the spirits of the deceased, um, which means that knowing this, with this knowledge in our back pocket, we can also use this plant for soothing any restless spirits that you may encounter elsewhere. Say, for example, you have some restless energies in a house that you've just moved into or in an apartment because of neighbors that are fighting all the time. Marshmallow might be a good plant to use in your magical endeavors to kind of soothe that and calm that down and tamp down that inflammation, that magical irritant. Um, now, so basically like, not just love magic, but anything where you might need some soothing or calming or just, you know, simmer down kind of energy, Marshmallow's a really great ally for that. And um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's basically the gist of this plant. This plant is just like, just, ah, it's nice. We don't need to be so mad. Just, just feel how soft my leaves are and just enjoy this nice cool water and just, just chill out. That's this plant. So anyway, that's all I have for you on this lovely little friend here. Um, I'm probably going to harvest some of these leaves and I'm waiting for those seeds. I'm waiting for those seeds because I want to gather those seeds this year. I haven't done it in years past. I have a couple of, there's a little baby marshmallow here that popped up due to those seeds, but this time I want to be a little more methodical about it. So that's what I'm doing this year. Anyway, I hope this video finds you well, and I will see you again soon.